Page 102. On this page, we have a picture of a woman working in her garden with the following caption. President Kimball taught that if we will yield to the sweet influence and pleading to the Spirit, we will be blessed with protection, power, freedom, and joy. Page 103. Chapter 10, Fortifying Ourselves Against Evil Influences. The gospel of Jesus Christ offers us power and protection against the evils of our day. From the life of Spencer W. Kimball, President Spencer W. Kimball taught that the fight against Satan and his forces is not a little skirmish with a half-willed antagonist, but a battle royal with an enemy so powerful and trenched and organized that we are likely to be vanquished if we are not strong, well-trained, and watchful. As a young missionary serving in the Central States Mission, he recorded in his diary an experience illustrating his resolve to withstand temptation. He was traveling on a train to Chicago, Illinois, when a man approached him. He tried to get me to read a vulgar book with obscene pictures. I told him it didn't appeal to me. He began tempting me then to go with him in Chicago and I knew he'd lead me down to hell. I shut him up, but after he was gone, I could feel myself blush for an hour. I thought, oh, how hard Satan, through his imps, tries to lead young people astray. I thank the Lord that I had power to overcome it. Teachings of Spencer W. Kimball Satan is real and will use any means to try to destroy us. In these days of sophistication and error, Men depersonalize not only God but the devil. Under this concept, Satan is a myth, useful for keeping people straight in less enlightened days, but outmoded in our educated age. Nothing is further from reality. Satan is very much a personal, individual spirit being, but without a mortal body. His desires to seal each of us, his, are no less ardent in wickedness than our fathers are in righteousness, to attract us to his own eternal kingdom. Page 104. To know where the danger is and to be able to recognize it in all of its manifestations provides protection. The evil one is alert. He is always ready to deceive and claim as his victims every unwary one, every careless one, every rebellious one. Regardless of who is getting the adversary special attention at any given time, he seeks to make all people miserable like unto himself. 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 27. Indeed, he seeks the misery of all mankind. 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 18. He is undeviating in his purposes and is clever and relentless in his pursuit of them. Peter cautioned us, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And the Savior said that the very elect would be deceived by Lucifer if it were possible. See Joseph Smith, Matthew chapter 1, verse 22. Lucifer will use his logic to confuse and his rationalizations to destroy. He will shade meanings, open doors an inch at a time, and lead from purest white through all the shades of gray to the darkest black. The arts deceiver has studied every way possible to achieve his ends, using every tool, every device possible. He takes over, distorts, and changes, and camouflages everything created for the good of man, so he may take over their minds and pervert their bodies and claim them his. He never sleeps. He is diligent and persevering. He analyzes carefully his problem and then moves forward diligently, methodically, to reach that objective. He uses all five senses in a man's natural hunger and thirst to lead him away. He anticipates resistance and fortifies himself against it. He uses time and space and leisure. He is constant and persuasive and skillful. He uses such useful things as radio, television, the printed page, the airplane, and the car to distort and damage. He uses the gregariousness of man, his loneliness, his every need to lead him astray. He does his work at the most propitious time in the most impressive places with the most influential people. 
He overlooks nothing that will deceive and distort and prostitute. Page 105. He uses money, power, force. He entices man and attacks at his weakest spot. He takes the good and creates ugliness. He uses every teaching art to subvert man. The adversary is subtle. He is cunning. He knows that he cannot induce good men and women to do major evils immediately. So he moves slyly, whispering half-truths, until he has his intended captives following him. With the Lord's help, we can withstand evil influences. If we would escape the deadly thrust of the evil one and keep our homes and families free and solidly fortified against all destructive influences so rampant about us, we must have the help of the Creator Himself. There is only one sure way, and that is through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and being obedient to its profound and inspired teachings. In the life of everyone there comes the conflict between good and evil, between Satan and the Lord. Every person who has reached or passed the age of accountability of eight years and who with a totally repentant heart is baptized properly positively will receive the Holy Ghost. If heeded, this member of the Godhead will guide, inspire, and warn, and will neutralize the promptings of the evil one. He who has greater strength than Lucifer, he who is our fortress and our strength, can sustain us in times of great temptation. While the Lord will never forcibly take anyone out of sin or out of the arms of the tempters, he exerts his spirit to induce the sinner to do it with divine assistance. And the man who yields to the sweet influence and pleadings of the Spirit and does all in his power to stay in a repentant attitude is guaranteed protection, power, freedom, and joy. Satan contended for the subservience of Moses. Moses, son of man, worship me, the devil tempted, with promise of worlds and luxuries in power. Page 106. The prophet demanded, Get thee hence, Satan. Moses chapter 1, verse 16. The liar, the tempter, the devil unwilling to give up this possible victim, now in rage and fury cried with a loud voice and rent upon the earth and commanded, saying, I am the only begotten, worship me. Moses chapter 1, verse 19. Moses recognized the deception and saw the power of darkness and the bitterness of hell. Here was a force not easily reckoned with, nor evicted. Terrified, he called upon God, then commanded with new power, I will not cease to call upon God, for his glory has been upon me. Wherefore, I can judge between him and thee. In the name of the only begotten, depart hence, Satan. Moses chapter 1, verses 18 and 21. Not even Lucifer, the archenemy of mankind, can withstand the power of the priesthood of God. Trembling, quaking, cursing, weeping, wailing, gnashing his teeth, he departed from the victorious Moses. We must be prepared to make a bold stand before Satan and against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness. We need the whole armor of God that we may withstand. See Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 through 13. Put on the whole armor of God, as Paul admonished. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. With this divine influence and protection, we may be able to discern the adversary's deceptions in whatever appealing words and rationalizations, and we may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. See Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. We must not yield to even the smallest temptations. Serious sin enters into our lives as we yield first to little temptations. Seldom does one enter into deeper transgression without first yielding to lesser ones, which open the door to the greater. Giving an example of one type of sin, someone said, An honest man doesn't suddenly become dishonest any more than a clean field suddenly becomes weedy. It is extremely difficult, if not impossible, for the devil to enter a door that is closed. He seems to have no keys for locked doors. But if a door is slightly ajar, he gets his toe in, and soon this is followed by his foot, then by his leg and his body and his head, and finally he is in all the way. Page 107. 
This situation is reminiscent of the fable of the camel and his owner who were traveling across the desert sand dunes when a windstorm came up. The traveler quickly set up his tent and moved in, closing the flaps to protect himself from the cutting, grinding sands of the raging storm. The camel was, of course, left outside, and as the violent wind hurled the sand against his body and into his eyes and nostrils, he found it unbearable and finally begged for entrance into the tent. There is room only for myself, said the traveler, but may I just get my nose in so I can breathe air, not filled with sand, asked the camel. Well, perhaps you could do that, replied the traveler, and he opened the flap ever so little, and the long nose of the camel entered. How comfortable the camel was now! But soon the camel became weary of the smarting sand on his eyes and ears. The wind-driven sand is like a rasp on my head. Could I put just my head in? Again the traveler rationalized that to acquiesce would do him no damage, for the camel's head could occupy the space at the top of the tent, which he himself was not using. So the camel put his head inside, and the beast was satisfied again, but for a short while only. Just the front quarters, he begged, and again the traveler relented, and soon the camel's front shoulders and legs were in the tent. Finally, by the same processes of pleading and of yielding, the camel's torso, his hind quarters, and all were in the tent. But now it was too crowded for the two, and the camel kicked the traveler out into the wind and storm. Like the camel, Lucifer readily becomes the master when one succumbs to his initial blandishments. Soon then the conscience is stilled completely, the evil power has full sway, and the door to salvation is closed until a thorough repentance opens it again. Page 108. The importance of not accommodating temptation in the least degree is underlined by the Savior's example. Did not he recognize the danger when he was on the mountain with his fallen brother, Lucifer, being sorely tempted by that master tempter? He could have opened the door and flirted with danger by saying, All right, Saint, and I'll listen to your proposition. I need not succumb. I need not yield. I need not accept, but I'll listen. Christ did not so rationalize. He positively and promptly closed the discussion and commanded, Get thee hence, Satan, meaning likely, Get out of my sight. Get out of my presence. I will not listen. I will have nothing to do with you. Then we read, The devil leaveth him. Matthew chapter 4, verses 10 through 11. This is our proper pattern. If we would prevent sin, rather than be faced with a much more difficult task of curing it. As I study the story of the Redeemer and his temptations, I am certain he spent his energies fortifying himself against temptation, rather than battling with it to conquer it. Right decisions now can help us withstand temptations later. One of the basic tasks for each individual is the making of decisions. A dozen times a day we come to a fork in the road and must decide which way we will go. Some alternatives are long and hard, but they take us in the right direction, toward our ultimate goal. Others are short, wide, and pleasant, but they go off in the wrong direction. It is important to get our ultimate objectives clearly in mind so that we do not become distracted at each fork in the road by the irrelevant questions. Which is the easier or more pleasant way? Or which way are others going? Right decisions are easiest to make when we make them well in advance, having ultimate objectives in mind. This saves a lot of anguish at the fork when we're tired and sorely tempted. When I was young, I made up my mind unalterably that I would never taste tea, coffee, tobacco, or liquor. I found that this rigid determination saved me many times throughout my varied experiences. There were many occasions when I could have sipped or touched or sampled, but the unalterable determination firmly established gave me good reason and good strength to resist. Page 109. The time to decide that we will settle for nothing less than an opportunity to live eternally with our Father is now, so that every choice we make will be affected by our determination to let nothing interfere with attaining that ultimate goal. Develop discipline of self 
so that more and more you do not have to decide and re-decide what you will do when you are confronted with the same temptation time and time again. You only need to decide some things once. How great a blessing it is to be free of agonizing over and over again regarding a temptation. To do such is time-consuming and very risky. We can push some things away from us once and have done with them. We can make a single decision about certain things that we will incorporate in our lives and then make them ours without having to brood and re-decide a hundred times what it is we will do and what we will not do. Indecision and discouragement are climates in which the adversary lives to function, for he can inflict so many casualties among mankind in those settings. If you have not done so yet, decide to decide. How wonderful it would be if we could just get every Latter-day Saint boy and girl to make up his mind or her mind during childhood to say, I will never yield to Satan or to anybody who would want me to destroy myself. The time to quit evil ways is before they start. The secret of the good life is in protection and prevention. Those who yield to evil are usually those who have placed themselves in a vulnerable position. We resist the adversary as we acknowledge our weaknesses and strive to overcome them. Having been reared on the farm, I know that when the pigs got out, I looked first for the holes through which they had previously escaped. When the cow was out of the field looking for greener pastures elsewhere, I knew where to look first for the place of her escape. It was most likely to be the place where she had jumped the fence before or where the fence had been broken. Likewise, the devil knows where to tempt where to put in his telling blows. He finds the vulnerable spot where one was weak before, he will be most easily tempted again. Page 110. It seems that evil is always about us. Accordingly, we must be alert constantly. We catalog our weaknesses and move in against them to overcome them. Most of us have vulnerable spots through which disaster can overtake us unless we are properly safeguarded and immunized. History provides many examples of strength and pride, both individual and national, which succumb to attack on the vulnerable spot. While these spots were often on the surface at least physical, Lucifer and his followers know the habits, weaknesses, and vulnerable spots of everyone and take advantage of them to lead us to spiritual destruction. With one person it may be thirst for liquor, another may have an insatiable hunger, Another has permitted his sex urges to dominate. Another loves money and the luxuries and comforts it can buy. Another craves power and so on. Let him who has evil tendencies be honest and acknowledge his weakness. I tell you the Lord places no sin in our lives. He has made no man wicked. Sin was permitted in the world and Satan permitted to tempt us. But we have our free agency. We may sin or live righteously but we cannot escape responsibility. To blame our sin upon the Lord, saying it is inherent and cannot be controlled, is cheap and cowardly. To blame our sins upon our parents and our upbringing is the way of the escapist. One's parents may have failed. Our own backgrounds may have been frustrating. But as sons and daughters of a living God, we have within ourselves the power to rise above our circumstances to change our lives. We plead with our people everywhere. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James chapter 4, verse 7. Page 111. On the top of this page, we have a picture of a family studying the Scriptures with the following caption. President Kimball said that in order for us to guard against the adversary, we need to hold fast to the iron rod. There may be some who have a general feeling of uneasiness because of world conditions and lengthening shadows of evil. But the Lord said, If ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. Doctrine and Covenants, section 38, verse 30. And again, peace I leave with you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 27. As Latter-day Saints, we must ever be vigilant. The way for each person and each family to guard against the slings and arrows of the adversary and to prepare for the great day of the Lord is to hold fast to the iron rod, 
to exercise greater faith, to repent of our sins and shortcomings, and to be anxiously engaged in the work of His kingdom on earth, which is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Herein lies the only true happiness for all our Father's children. Page 112. Suggestions for Study and Teaching. Consider these ideas as you study the chapter or as you prepare to teach. For additional help, refer to Roman numeral pages 5 through 9. Which teachings of President Kimball about Satan and his methods do you find helpful and why? See pages 103 through 105. Review the section beginning on page 105. In what ways can the Lord help us withstand evil? For an example, see the story on page 103. When have you received this kind of help? Read the fable on page 107. Why do you think the traveler allowed the camel into his tent? Consider how the Savior resisted temptation. See pages 107 through 108. What are some ways parents can help their children recognize and resist even the smallest temptations? Review the second full paragraph on page 108. Compare the process of preventing sin with the process of curing it. President Kimball said, Right decisions are easiest to make when we make them well in advance. Page 108. How might our lives be affected by early decisions to keep such commandments as the word of wisdom? For an example, see page 108. What are some decisions related to gospel living that you have unalterably made? Consider President Kimball's observations about his pigs and his cow. Pages 109 through 110. What do we gain by acknowledging our weaknesses and accepting responsibility for them? Related scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 1 Nephi chapter 15, verses 23 through 25, Helaman chapter 5, verse 12, Ether chapter 12, verse 27, and Doctrine and Covenants section 10, verse 5. End of chapter 10 of Teachings of the Presidents of the Church, Spencer W. Kimball, Fortifying Ourselves Against Evil Influences. Read by David Shaw. Scriptures relating to chapter 10 of the Teachings of Presidents of the Church, Spencer W. Kimball, Fortifying Ourselves Against Evil Influences. 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 27, Wherefore men are free according to the flesh, and all things are given them which are expedient unto man. And they are free to choose liberty and eternal life through the great mediator of all men, or to choose captivity and death according to the captivity and power of the devil. For he seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 18, and because he had fallen from heaven and had become miserable forever, he sought also the misery of all mankind. Wherefore he said unto Eve, Yea, even that old serpent who is the devil, who is the father of all lies, wherefore he said, Partake of the forbidden fruit, and ye shall not die, but ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Moses chapter 1, verse 16. Get thee hence, Satan, deceive me not, for God said unto me, Thou art after the similitude of mine only begotten. Moses chapter 1, verse 19. And now when Moses had said these words, Satan cried with a loud voice and ranted upon the earth and commanded, saying, I am the only begotten, worship me. Moses chapter 1, verse 18. And again Moses said, I will not cease to call upon God. I have other things to inquire of him, for his glory has been upon me. Wherefore I can judge between him and thee. Depart hence, Satan. Moses chapter 1, verse 21. And now Satan began to tremble, and the earth shook, and Moses received strength and called upon God, saying, In the name of the only begotten, depart hence, Satan. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, 
and having done all to stand. Matthew chapter 4, verses 10 through 11. 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with a temptation also make a way to escape, that she may be able to bear it. 1 Nephi chapter 15, verses 23 through 25. 23. And they said unto me, What meaneth the rod of iron which our father saw that led to the tree? 24. And I said unto them that it was the word of God, and whoso would hearken unto the word of God, and would hold fast unto it, they would never perish. Neither could the temptations and the fiery darts of the adversary overpower them unto blindness, to lead them away to destruction. 25. Wherefore I, Nephi, did exhort them to give heed unto the word of the Lord. Yea, I did exhort them with all the energies of my soul, and with all the faculty which I possessed, that they would give heed to the word of God, and remember to keep his commandments always in all things. Helaman chapter 5, verse 12. And now, my sons, remember, remember, that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation, that when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe, because of the rock upon which ye are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. Ether chapter 12, verse 27. And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness that they may be humble, and my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. Doctrine and Covenants, section 10, verse 5. Pray always that you may come off conqueror, yea, that you may conquer Satan, and that you may escape the hands of the servants of Satan that do uphold his work.